So here we are with the final part of our bedtime series. This one's the connection phase, and as usual, everything that you see is done in conjunction with the training we receive from Baxter and also Great Ormond Street. Deja vu. Yeah. So another two minute hand wash, some more gel, and now we're going to connect the bags up. As it says, connect the bags, open the clamps. How old are your hands? Oh, he's 30. Mm. <laughs> My 22-year-old's face. <laughs> I wish. Anyway. That's why I married you. Okay. So this red bag, this red clamp is going to go first. That is the bag that's going to go on the heater. So red hot. See, get it? Red hot. So I'm not going to talk while I take the, the tops off because, again, there's quite an infection risk. So we're not going to talk while I touch the bag. So... <laughs> That's Ethan, just to be clear. <laughs> so that the bag attached. I'm going to open this clamp. So I break that clamp <laughs> and open, break that seal, sorry, and open this clamp. So in between each section of the bag, I have to put alcohol gel on again. Are you being Rudy? Are you being a Rudy? Do you not like hearing what mummy's got to say? <laughs> cheeky. You cheeky, aren't you? So, white one's next. That's going on the other weak bag. So that after the red bag is empty at the top, it pulls it from this one. Your hands look like that. <laughs> so the blue one's going next. So that doesn't mean cold, but it does mean um so it's different to all the others because it's a different bag, so that's the extra deal that's going on last one over there. Yeah. So that's all the bags and um, the clamps open down there and then we just got to open this clamp this is called the patient line so that is the line that will be attached to ethan so we've got to open the clamp there because the liquid has to get up to the top so we have to open that one this one we're leaving clamped because this is an unused line if he was a bit bigger needed a bit more fluid we could attach another bag to that one because he's still little we don't need that one just yet so let's have a look so this is where i'm going to pick the red bag up now it's drained and it can sit on the top on the heater, so that plate will warm it up so that it's nice and warm when it goes into Ethan's tummy. So he'll ask me again, are the two chamber bags mixed? Which they now are. And I'm going to press green and now it's priming. So basically the machine is going to send liquid all the way around, make sure there's liquid everywhere it needs to be. And, and then when it's ready to be connected to Ethan, it'll say connect. So that usually takes about five minutes maybe. So that gives us some time either to read to Ethan, put his feed on, attach his foot to his oxygen monitor, or today we're going to change his dressing. His dressing has to be changed every other day. And today is one of those days. So things we've got a little bit of time on this is priming, that's what we're going to do next. So two minute hand wash done. How could you? And we're going to connect Ethan to the machine. Hopefully he looks quite tired today, so he's rolled over onto that side, which is very helpful for me, because sometimes he's a bit wriggly, but quite difficult. Okay. It's a bit tangled, isn't it? I didn't touch it, I didn't touch it. Hmm? I didn't touch it. <laughs> so here, this is the patient line, this is about to attach to Ethan's tube. So again, I'm not going to talk while I'm doing it, just because of the infection risk. But... Okay, so that's connected now. Let me just undo this clamp, which you might have seen. That's some, the end of the cap is full of iodine, which usually means we get little orange spots all over his bed, which is what's happened there. And then you can press this and it started. So it starts initial drain. 
So you might see the iodine come shooting out of there. So that shows that it started. It goes all the way through the tube and it'll go off into the machine in a minute. Sometimes it does it nice and quickly, other times it's a bit of a struggle like today. <laughs> There, just to give that tube a bit more space. It's going, it's going. <laughs> so basically the initial drain, that means that, as I said to you earlier on, and Ethan has a last bag fill, so he has a tummy full of 200 mils all day long. So this is now just trying to get out as much of that 200 mils as it can before it starts the procedure. So the procedure after it's drained all that is that it takes fluid from this bag up here and it puts it into Ethan's tummy. He has 370 mils and it sits in his tummy for a dwell period of 50 minutes. And then basically what that will do is it will be cleaning his blood, we will be pulling off any extra fluid and then after that 50 minute procedure, 50 minute dwell time, sorry, it pulls it all back out just like it's doing now, draining, puts it into this bag and then it starts all over again. So he has 13 cycles overnight and so close to about 13 hours after all the drains and the fills and, and the actual dwell periods of the, when the fluid is in his tummy. So we always have to make sure he, he gets on for seven o'clock in the evening because with obviously with the other girls we have to get them to school in the morning. So if he's not off by eight o'clock in the morning then it's difficult for us to get the girls to school on time. So we always have to try and get him on by seven o'clock in the evening. And then obviously while he's asleep it's all going on and doing the work of his kidneys which can be a bit scary sometimes but it's also amazing that there was a machine that can do what he can't and that at the end of the day is is what's keeping him alive so what can be better than that right so now he's on his machine we've just got to do the last few bits to get him ready for bed so the first thing is to give him his medicines so he has citron which is an iron supplement he has lactulose that just makes it doesn't means he doesn't get constipated if he gets constipated it can be a bit of an issue for where the catheter is placed it might come out and not drain quite as well and won't be as successful so we have to have to keep him pooing regularly um, and this is calcium um, because he's obviously kidneys don't work very well his bones can be quite weak he has had some fractured ribs in the past and we have to keep his bones nice and strong so this is why he has some calcium so just going to give these to him so these go into the into his tube massive blessing because of all the amount of things that we've got and everything's a nod colour. And he poos all over it as well. Yeah, so we'll often do that. That's what lactulose does for you. So there you go, that's those three medicines given to him. So the next thing to do is to his feed. So he has a continuous feed all night. So this is his feed pump. Because he's on his dialysis, it, his blood sugar has to be kept up. That's why he needs feeding, I'm nearly broken. <laughs> so he goes on a continuous feed. So he's on um, a mixture of cow and gate and protophar, which is a protein supplement. So I just have to set up the feed pump. So he needs a little adapter so it fits him properly. So we'll put them on the floor because we don't like leaving them in his bed. So that just attaches to the end there. This one attaches to his bottle. And his bottle sits just up here. It used to have another side but it broke. <laughs> Not very robust. And then we just have that to take... That was you, was it? Yeah. Well, it's not going to work now, is it? Push it down the hole. So this is just putting, priming the line basically, so putting the milk all through the line so he doesn't get any air into his tummy when the feed pump starts. So we just keep this going until it goes right to the end. There it goes. And this one attaches in here. So, 
check that it's cleared from last time, which it is. So I'm just going to touch this to his, his gasostomy. I don't even know if I say that word correctly, but there you go. <laughs> no one would have known if you, <laughs> if you just kept that to yourself. Someone might know. <laughs> and then just click it onto here and it'll start running. So that now, okay, you see it? The milk's starting to just feed down his tube. So that kind of drip feeds him all. Well, this one's just for a couple of hours and then we'll put another one on later that drips feeds for him all the way through the night. So that's good. Right, the next thing we have to do is attach him to his oxygen monitor. So here we have the tube wire that connects him to his oxygen monitor. A little probe on the end that just attaches to his toe. We have a lot of problems with this. So generally we put a little sock over him because that keeps it on a bit better. I'm just going to attach this to his toe. Sometimes it doesn't like it and kicks his foot all around, which can be make things a bit difficult. So there you go, this one just attaches to his toe and then we have feed pumps getting in the way. And then we just have a little bit of plaster that sticks to his foot just to keep it in place. And then we put the sock on over the top. Turn the machine on and hope it's well. So we just have to put the limits up a bit. We have to do this every time we turn it on because it's forgotten it from yesterday. So we put the high on to 185 for his heart rate and the low on to about 85 for his heart rate. Then his oxygen's on low of 90, high of 100%. As you can see, yay, it's working. So his oxygen level is currently 96, his heart rate is 130. So there we go. So I'm going to throw everything in the bin. And then it's pretty much even done tonight. So I'm going to turn off the lights, put on his baby monitor, and let him sleep. And then. I'm going to say that's Ethan done, but then what? That's Ethan done. And then we have to go downstairs, oh. throwing those things around. And we have to wash all of his syringes for the day, all of his bottles, and put them in the steriliser so they're all ready to be used again tomorrow. So these last for about a week before we can, before then the numbers generally start coming off, so we have to throw them away. So we rotate them every week. So that's what we're off to do now. <laughs>